so hello students how are you so we are here with our lecture number 4 or oh, let's say lecture number 3 na so here we are with the revision series of physics and today's topic is capacitor in the previous uh, lecture we have covered the potential difference and the concept related to it okay now onwards we are going to see some of the concept related to capacitor which is important for this examination and we will also go through some pyqs so in today's session what our aim is to our aim is to cover the electrostats of conductor the dielectric capacitance parallel plate capacitor and capacitor with dielectric so all of these concept we are going to discuss but firstly we will discuss the leftover concept that we have is the electric potential energy of a system charge of a system of charges okay so we know that electric potential energy is nothing but the concept of potential energy came because of the conservative nature of forces okay so where there is a conservative force which is path independent the work done by that conservative force is path independent so there we introduce a kind of energy which is related to the configuration or the arrangement of the system so that energy is associated with the arrangement or the configuration of that system that energy is termed as the potential energy and in electric field if we are talking about charges so it is the energy defined for the electric electric charges because in electric charges there is a force electric force which is coulomb's force of attraction and that coulomb's force of attraction is conservative in nature these are conservative forces okay for conservative forces this potential energy concept has been introduced okay no if i talk about the electric potential energy of a system of char charges so i will consider two charge here let's say q1 and q2 so if i talk about the potential energy of that system you firstly understand then we have a charge q1 okay then we bring a charge q2 from infinity to a specific point p which is at a distance of r from q1 in that process the work that we have done against the field of q1 to bring q2 is stored as the potential energy in this system on the system okay and that potential energy is defined as u12 means q1 and q2 is 1 upon 4 pi epsilon not q1 q2 by r okay so this potential energy is depend <clears throat> on the present state of the system not it is not interested in this how the state has been achieved because this potential energy is came from the negative of work done by conservative force conservative force and this negative conservative force is the electric force here and this is path independent path independent so no matter you have bring this particle q2 from this path or this path or this path only the final and initial position matters in this expression of potential energy okay so that is why i have said you that potential energy of a system is the it tells us about the present state of the system not the state how the state is to be achieved okay now how the state has to be achieved got it so it is the energy related to the configuration of charges yeah definitely for two charges we have taken but if there are multiple of charges there also be the term potential energy we will define so if we define the potential energy for three charges let's say this is for two i will write it later
So this is for Q1 and Q2. For two charges, it is U is equals to 1 upon 4 by epsilon naught Q1, Q2 by. Now, if there are three charges in the system, Q1, Q2, and Q3. Now, what is the potential energy? Let's say the distance between them is R3, R1, and R2. Okay. So potential energy is defined as how many combination you have. So potential energy, combination of this charge, Q1 with Q3, combination of Q3 with Q2, and combination of Q1 with Q2. Okay. So only three energies be there. So it is let's say 1 upon 4 pi epsilon we have considered as k so k q1 q2 divided by the distance between them which is r1 plus k q2 q3 divided by the distance between them which is r2 plus k q2 k q3 q1 or q1 q3 divided by the distance between them which is r3 Okay, so Q1 and Q2 you have to take as because potential energy is a scalar quantity. So take the charges, take charges with sign. Okay, now the another definition of potential energy is. Potential energy is also defined as potential per unit charge. Okay. Potential per unit test charge. So this is the also the definition of potential energy. Sorry. Q times into we know. Q times because potential is nothing but potential energy per unit charge. Okay. So if you multiply it with here, you will get this expression. This expression is also helpful to calculate the work done by electric force. Okay, because potential energy is nothing but potential energy potential energy is equals to negative of work done by conservative force okay so we can also define the work done by q into v got it now electric dipole in the external electric field now we are not interested here the electric field. <clears throat> Hi, Eugene. How are you? Good evening. Uh, you have joined late, na? It's already 15 minutes gone. Good evening. Why are you joining late? Any kind of issue you are facing? So, so please be on the time now. Do you know the timings of classes? It is from 3 p.m. to 3.55. The timing you will not. Three p.m. to four. PM, let's say. Actually, it is for 3.55, but you can consider it 4 p.m. So please be on time from next class. OK. OK, Alima, I know. And thank you so much for this confirmation, your name, because I don't think so this is your name. OK. 
so alima please be on time from the next class okay this is the revision class it will help you in any way okay you are preparing for your boards so in that way also it will help you if you are preparing for je and neat it will also going to help you okay so are you a student of medical or non medical or i uh, okay medical so please be on time pay attention and if some mathematical terms you are not able to understand please let me know at that instant okay so here we are with the revision of electric okay electric dipole in ele uh, external electric field we have studied electric dipole in the previous session and we have seen the electric field expression for that okay for three of the cases like uh, if the point we have taken on the axis on the equatorial position or at any general position now this is the external electric field and we have take the field uniform okay to confirm the field is uniform or not these electric field lines are to be parallel for each okay parallel with each other now this is the electric field e and we have placed a dipole which is minus q let's say and plus q in this situation we are not interested the electric field developed by the dipole only we are talking about the external electric field which is generated with the help of some external source okay. we have placed this dipole in this electric field so the length of this dipole is nothing but 2l now if you see what is the force acting on this dipole so this is the positive charge so it will experiences a force in the direction of electric field we know f is equals to q into e what it so this is for positive charge it is in the direction of electric field which is q e and for negative charge it is in the opposite direction of the electric field so it will act in this direction which is minus q e so here you will say that this these forces are equal but opposite in direction so net force if you calculate net force on the dipole on the dipole so f net is given by f1 plus f2 it is minus qe plus qe which is results in zero so if you place the dipole in an external electric field the net force on the dipole will be zero okay but what if if you displace this dipole with some angle like say theta in this direction in anti clockwise sense so this q will be here now this minus q will be here now again this q will force a will feel a force qe and this will also minus qe now in this situation we have this line and there are two equal and opposite forces are acting on it now this we can say that here the net force obviously the net force on the dipole is zero but here these two opposite forces equal and opposite forces by some distance between them will form a moment okay so they will generate a moment which automatically results in the torque because if you will see this end will be pulled by this force okay this end is also pulled by this force so automatically what they will do they are pulling with each other in the opposite sense so again the dipole align with the 
electric field. Got it? Now, this moment, you know that moment is given by the force. Moment is given by force into perpendicular distance between the forces. Perpendicular distance between line of force. Okay. So here the line of force is this and this. These are the line of forces. This length is let's say 2L, which is the length of dipole. So in this length, the perpendicular length we are interested in. Okay. Let's say this angle is theta. So <clears throat> because we have displaced this in this direction. Okay. At L. So perpendicular distance will be the half of what we have calculated here. Got it. So it will result in 2L sine theta and 2L cos theta. Got it? No. So in this discussion, what we are concluding here is that the net force on the dipole in electric external electric field, which is not the field generated by the dipole, it is the external electric field. So net force on the, on the dipole will be zero. Only the moment will act, which is create a rotational effect in the dipole, which means this if this is the dipole you placed in the electric field, so it will only rotate, not translate. What is it? Now, so then we are going to calculate the torque. The same expression we are applying here. Let's say we have tilt this dipole minus Q plus Q. This angle is theta. Okay. So we can say that perpendicular distance between them is 2L cos of theta. So torque here is nothing but moment into perpendicular distance. Sorry. <clears throat> Torque and moment are same. Torque is also defined as force into perpendicular distance. Force vector into the distance which is perpendicular to the force. Okay. Let me check the internet connection then, Alima. Okay. Now my voice is clear to you. <clears throat> I think now it is clear, you know, and might be there is an internet issue with your side or with my side. I'm not saying that, that this is happening only on your side. It might be happened to this uh, me also. Okay. And it's good when whenever you have some kind of issue, you will immediately told me. Okay. So torque, what we have defined torque, torque we have defined as force cross R vector. Now, it is obviously the moment we can equate it. In the previous slide, we have calculated the moment as force into perpendicular distance between line of force. The so force into perpendicular distance is 2L sine of theta. Now, this moment is nothing but torque. So torque we have here F into 2L sine of theta. Now, this F is nothing but QE 2L sine theta. <clears throat> if you take this Q into 2L together, Q into 2L and e sin theta so it will result in q into 2l is nothing but dipole moment which is equals to p p into q into 2l vector now this will result in p e sin of theta 
and we can say that this torque let's say we define it by like this hello new, new joiny how are you so torque here is equals to p e sin theta which is p vector cross you can write it as p vector okay so this is the torque vector for electric dipole if it is placed in the external electric field got it any kind of doubt alima samsung lab 2 and what's the name of your samsung lab 2 i think i have forgot so it is clear to you each and every one now if i talk about the potential energy in external electric field okay okay aliman very good now let us we talk about the potential energy okay of electric dipole in external electric field so again we are not going to derive it we will directly write the expression for it so the potential energy we will define as actually that change of potential energy we will define minus of p vector dot e vector okay torque we have p vector cross e vector okay this is the torque and force net we have as zero so these three are the characteristic of this extern, uh, this electric dipole in external electric field. So delta you can also open as minus P dot E will open as P E cos of theta. So you can define it as like this. Got it? Now, this is the question on your screen. Try to solve it. I am giving you one minute. Very easy question is this, and it is asked in GE Main 2023. So that uh, that kind of question also you can expect. Electric potential at a point P due to a point charge of 5 into 10 raised to the power 9 minus 9 coulomb is 50 volt. The distance of P from the point charge 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught equals to 9 into 10 raised to power plus 9 newton meter square per coulomb square this is very important and many times the unit has been asked what is the unit of this 1 upon 4 by epsilon naught or what is the unit of this epsilon naught so actually this is if you take the inverse of it the inverse of it will be the unit of this epsilon naught and epsilon naught is nothing but the permittivity of free space what it do you know the concept of this permittivity of free space what is this by the name of it you can understand permittivity like it's some kind of permission of free space and it is related to the charge stored okay so whenever you have a port and you are filling the water inside it there is certain condition came out when the water the port is completely full if you now again drop some water into it it will spill out so who is defining that how much amount of water in the port can be there okay so how much amount of charge the free space can store is defined by the permittivity of free space so whenever the charge exceeds the permittivity will break and charge will leak and that leakage of charge you will see in the form of lightning when there are clouds in the sky when they rub each other okay okay so option b 
by alima okay let me finish what i'm tagging then we will start solving this so what will happen then when the cloud will rub each other with the friction so we know the term charging by friction they got charged and obviously they have also some of their charges but whenever they exceeds with the charge they exceeds with the limit of charge the charge will leak out they will break the permittivity and the charge will leak out and that leakage of charge is the lightning okay which means now the charge is being flown from the insulators because air is the insulator okay so electric potential at point p due to charge this hum jante hain we know that ki due to a point charge what is the electric potential is equals to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon not q upon r okay q is given here positive so we will take it positive vp is given to you 50 volt 1 upon 4 pi epsilon not is 9 into 10 raised to the power 9 q is given as 5 into 10 raised to the power minus 9 divided by it is not minus it is plus divided by r r is the distance and that has been asked the distance of point v from the point charge so r is nothing but 9 into 10 raised to the power 9 5 into 10 raised to the power minus 9 divided by 50. Now this will cancel out. This will 10. So it is 0.9 meter. When you multiply, because option is given in centimeter, some of you in hurry will take out this and get wrong answer and get it wrong. So use your patience in the beginning of the question and in the last of the question. So 0.9 multiply by 100 because we know one meter has 100 centimeter, so it is 90 centimeter. So a big, 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 big clapping for Alima because he got it correct. Four number you have got, almost 1500 ranks above 1500 you will place by correcting just one question. Okay. now see this question and try to solve it two charges each of magnitude 0.01 coulomb and separated by a distance 0.4 constitute an electric dipole obviously it will become an electric dipole if the dipole is placed in a uniform electric field we have discussed it same same concept we have dis just discussed it of 10 dyn per coulomb dyn is not that dyn it's a unit cgs unit of force so i will help you in this we know that 1 newton is equals to 10 raised to the power 5 dyn okay making 30 degree angle with electric field the magnitude of torque acting on it i don't think so that this much simple question can be asked in gym but it is been asked okay in the september session or uh, in 2023 so try to solve it you have one minute be careful with the dimensions unit of dimension here the distance is given in mm so i think you get it what i'm trying to say Convert it in meter. Dyn, dyn. You have to convert it into newton because in answer check the unit. It is newton meter. So you have to change all the units in newton and meter. So, okay. I hope you are solving it. Meanwhile, we I am I have also started solving it. Okay, and you guys please match your answer. now the charges that is been given is 0.01 coulomb okay 
and there are two charges obviously opposite in nature honge and distance between them let's say l is nothing but 0.4 mm and we will convert it into meter so 0.4 into 10 raised to the power minus 3 meter now the electric field uniform electric field is given you as magnitude 10 dyn per coulomb now we will convert it into newton so 1 newton is 10 raised to the power 5 dyn so how many newton in 1 dyn so 1 dyn will have 1 upon 10 raised to the power 5 newton or we will say it 10 raised to the power 5 newton now 10 into 10 raised to the power minus 5 newton per coulomb now the theta is given you as 30 degree torque is been asked so torque what is the formula for torque it is pe sin theta p cross e open the expression pe sin theta so p here <coughs> is nothing but the dipole moment dipole moment is given by q into the distance between the charges e is given you as 10 into 10 raised to the power minus 5 multiply with sin theta sin 30 which is equals to 1 by 2 now put the value of q and l also so q here is 0.01 l here is 4 into 10 raised to the power minus 3 into 10 into 10 raised to the power minus 5 into 1 by 2 this 2 will cancel out this 4 two times so now we have 2 into 10 <coughs> into 10 raised to the power minus 5 minus 3 will add up it will result in minus 8 so finally we will have as 0.01 into 2 10 10 raised to the power minus 8 this will results in 10 raised to the power minus 2 0.01 will become 10 raised to the power minus 2 it will results in 10 raised to the power minus 10 1 power will be cancel out by this so it will results in 2 into 10 raised to the power minus <clears throat> some of the mistake that we have made here Yeah, definitely we have made some mistake and what is that we have put 4 instead of 0.4 so alima where is your attention so here it is 0.4 so by cancelling it with 2 it will result in 0.2 so definitely one power we have exceed here which is minus 9 so it will results in 20 into uh, sorry 2 into 10 raised to the power minus 10 newton per newton into meter the unit of torque is newton meter yeah canilo what issue you have or are you just checking the function of google meet <laughs> so option d is the correct one alima did you able to get this jnv nizamabad what is the problem with you okay answer torque q to a e sin theta yeah and you have placed 2a by multiplying this point 4 na no we have considered that 2a the entire distance between the charges okay so here 2a you will consider as 0.4 because it is a separation now what you have did you have uh, i suppose you have did so you have assume a is equals to 0.4 and then you multiply it with 2 i think i hope so you have to do this this is a silly mistake do not worry about it okay try to remember the concept concept is that dipole moment is defined as 
the distance between charge multiplied by the distance between the charge whether you have taken the distances 2l or 4l or 8l whatever but that is to be equal to the distance between the charges got it now so kenilo tap is this your name is this your real name is it okay if you tell me your name no <clears throat> this is a something conceptual question and this kind of question will help you to improve your rank okay a dipole no sir so what is your actual name a dipole comprises of two catherine okay catherine so this is your first class now we are discussing electrostatics and the topic is the electric dipole placed in electric external electric field and here we are seeing some numerical so if you find any problem because in this uh, numerical problem we use uh, a, a concept we are going to use a concept so i will explain it to you here okay so a dipole comprises of two charged particle of identical magnitude q and opposite in nature the mass m of the positive charged particle is half of the mass of the negative charged particle now two charge are separated by distance l if the dipole is placed in a uniform electric field e in such a way that dipole axis makes a very small angle with the electric field e the angular frequency of the oscillation of the dipole when released is given by okay so in this question firstly we will try to note what is given so there are two charged particle identical magnitude q opposite in nature let's say minus q and plus q the mass m of the positive charge particle is half of the mass of negative charge which means negative charge have mass 2m if the mass of negative charge is 2m so the positive charge has half of this mass so it will m now two charges are separated by a distance l let's say this distance is l if the dipole is placed in a uniform external electric field let's say e vector in such a way the dipole axis makes a very small angle with the electric field e the angular frequency of the oscillation of the dipole when released so we have disturbed this dipole by an angle theta and then will it will start oscillating in this way so we have to calculate the angular frequency of oscillation now if in the question the masses are not given that this this question will be simpler for you <clears throat> if the masses are same but here the masses are different so that is why the center of mass because every rod or every system like this pen if i just throw this pen this pen is placed on the table and when you click on the one end of it and other end is free it will rotate about its center of mass okay so everybody with one free end and one free end is uh, strike with some force so it will start rotating with uh, rotating with the center of mass when no end is fixed so here in dipole also there is no end which is fixed you know so it will rotate about its center of mass now we have to calculate the center of mass of it now i will explain this question to you in a different screen for the better understanding so this is 2m or minus q i will not take that because here we are discussing the center of mass so definitely if you will see this mass is heavy than this so center of mass will shift itself toward this mass it is the center of mass 
you know that center of mass shift towards the heavier mass now we know that we have tilted with an angle theta and it is very small so torque we know that in dipole if the dipole is placed in external electric field the torque will be given by p e sin theta but here theta is very very small very very small so we can assume the sin theta to be approximately theta now the torque will be minus pe sin theta sorry minus pe theta now you have think why this minus has come because we have tilt this uh, dipole in the external electric field externally we are rotating it now it will not rotate by itself so we are providing an external torque which is anti clockwise which is in anti clockwise sense so and for anti clockwise sense we will to, uh, take the torque as negative one okay so it is minus pe into theta the torque we also know from the rotational dynamics torque is nothing but i into alpha and this i is about the center of mass for a system of particles you know the formula now <clears throat> so we are going to equate it with this i center of mass plus into alpha is equals to minus pe theta now i is very simple to calculate from center of mass so it is mass 2m into the distance from the origin and we have take the origin at center of mass so distance is what is this distance this distance because the total distance given here is l so this distance will become l by 3 and this distance will become 2l by 3 got it how so for that we are going to uh, equate that uh, this is 2m into x1 plus m into x2 divided by 2m plus m in this equation we are going to deal and x1 plus x2 we know that it is l so from that expression okay okay Deco. we know that torque in the external electric field we have just discussed it is mine uh, pe sine of theta because it is given in the question that theta is very small so sine theta you can approximate as theta okay and torque results will be in minus pe theta why it is minus come because we externally tilt it by the external force which work against the electric force you know? so the displacement produced by it is in the negative direction or also the direction of torque we have given is anti-clockwise so anti-clockwise torque we have taken negative so that is why this negative appears now we also know that this torque is equals to i alpha from the rotational dynamics now i is the center of mass the moment of inertia about center of mass so here we have two system of particle m and 2m so it is very easy to calculate the center of mass of them okay let's say this distance is x so this distance will become l minus x okay so from origin if you calculate the center of mass of this this system so what it will be this mass multiplied by this distance 
plus this mass multiply by this distance divided by the total mass so 2m into l minus x plus m into x divided by 3m 2ml minus 2mx sorry we have taken inverse of it center of mass x center of mass will be given by uh, this 2m multiply by this distance which is minus x from the origin plus this mass into the distance l minus x divided by m1 plus m2 which is 2m plus m it results in 3m if you take the uh, <clears throat> m common out so the x center of mass you will have as x what is the value of x then you will have as l by 3 okay and this is at 2 l by 3 got it because if there are m and m and this distance is l so where should be the center of mass at l by 2 got it so we have just covered it 2m this mass become twice of it so this will shift at the l by 3 l by 3 and this results in 2l by 3 got it now i moment of inertia is given by m into r square r is the distance from center of mass or axis of rotation and because this system is rotating about the center of mass so the axis of rotation is the center of mass so for this 2m mass particle it is separated by a distance l by 3 from center of mass so l by 3 whole square now it is clear to you how do we calculate the center of mass? We are not paying so much time to calculate this because it will uh, increase the time of calculation for us. Okay. Got it? Okay. Now, plus what is the moment of inertia of this mass particle? Mass multiply by the distance between them which is 2l by 3 whole square into alpha minus pe you will calculate it as it will become 2m into l square by 9 plus m into 4l square by 9 to alpha minus pe eta now this is 2 by 2 ml square by 9 it is 4 ml square by 9 so 2 plus 4 will become 6 ml square by 9 into alpha is equals to minus p e theta now <clears throat> if you if you are able to calculate the p p is nothing but the q into l the separation between them alpha here we can take 6 ml square by 9 into alpha is equals to q minus q into l pay attention here alima here we have take l not 2l because the separation given here is l into theta into e into theta this l Cancel this L. 2, 3, 2, 3, 6. Oh, sorry. 3, 2, 6. And 3, 3, 9. So, when we take this expression. Sorry for the inconvenience of space. So, here we have 2 by 3 M L divided into alpha is equals to Q minus Q E theta. So alpha here we have as 3 q e by 2 l into theta now again to the screen 
so alpha that we have calculated is 3 q e upon 12 into theta and this is the relation for the angular acceleration we know that in in oscillation the acceleration is directly proportional to minus of the displacement this is for linear and to remove this proportionality sign we have minus omega square x omega is the angular frequency now for rotational acceleration this result this will convert into alpha equals to minus omega square x will result in theta so if you compare this equation this equation with this so you have omega square is equals to 3 qe upon 2l so omega will result in square root of 3 qe divided by 2l okay so this is the angular frequency which is given by option A. Now, you are clear with this question? Any kind of doubt? Halima, any kind of doubt you will have, you can ask. Okay. Now, this is the electrostatics of conductor. So, time, uh, time is up. So, we will discuss this in the uh, next lecture. Till now, if you have any kind of doubt, you can ask. Otherwise, the lecture is being over. Thank you so much for being attentive. And obviously, I want to thank you, Alima and uh, Kenilo, for your responses. Okay, Be responsive and please join on the time. The timing of the class is 3 p.m. So I want everyone to be attend the class at 3 or 3, 5 you can. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Catherine. Thank you so much, Alima.